Hey family, welcome to New Testament Week 6. In the depths of Matthew 4 and Luke 4 through 5, you saw a huge range of topics. I've chosen to focus on how Jesus prioritized the different aspects of his mission and also his preparation for it. So sit back, relax, enjoy the tank, and let's chat. We find the Savior's assignment in Luke 4, 18 through 19. Quote, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Looking over what he's been sent to do, there are multiple references to preaching. He is also to heal the brokenhearted, which to me sounds like emotional healing, and for the bruised, he sets them at liberty. There's only one reference to physical healing, and that's recovering of sight to the blind. I think this gives us some perspective on the events in Luke chapter 4, verses 42 through 43. It says the people stayed him, that he should not depart from them. But rather than stay and continue to heal them, as one might expect a loving Savior to do, he told them, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also, for therefore am I sent. To give us a little more clarity about what's going on in these verses, I want to look at Mark's account of the same story. In Mark 1, 29-38, Jesus came to the house of the brothers Andrew and Simon Peter. He heals Peter's mother-in-law of a fever. Then, as the sun set in verse 32, all the diseased and possessed of the devil were brought to him. Verse 33 says that all the city was gathered together at the door. So Jesus healed them and cast out devils. But what I found really interesting was what happened the next morning. After spending the evening surrounded by people, healing and casting out devils, Jesus gets up long before day and seeks solitude. Peter and a few others follow him, listen to their conversation. Peter and the others say, quote, all men seek for thee. Jesus says, quote, let us go into the next towns, that I may preach there also, for therefore came I forth. Now the word therefore means for this reason. Why did Jesus say that? Why, when the people of his hometown were still seeking for him, did he say, let's go somewhere else? Well, as I read this, it seemed to me that healing was starting to get in the way of the rest of Jesus' mission. Is healing a good thing to do? Yes. But as we saw earlier, healing was only supposed to be one small part of it. It wasn't his main purpose in coming. In Mark 1.38, he names preaching as the reason why he came forth. And that reinforces the verses he read from Isaiah. It's not that Jesus didn't want to heal. He just understood there were other, more vital things he needed to do. And if he spent his days just healing ailments, he'd never get to the real purpose of his ministry, to teach a higher way of living. I'm reminded of a general conference talk given by the Apostle Dallin H. Oaks in 2007 entitled Good, Better, Best. In it, Elder Oaks teaches us to differentiate between the good things we could do with our time, the better things, and how to tell what would be the best use of our time. I think that in these verses, Jesus teaches that very lesson. Healing was certainly a good thing to be doing, but preaching was a better thing for him to do, a higher priority for his ministry on earth. This, I believe, is why sometimes when he did heal, such as the leper in Mark 1, 41-45, he told those who were healed not to tell anyone that he'd healed them. His time on earth was limited. He couldn't afford to spend it swamped with crowds of sick people, leaving no time to teach. He had to prioritize. The same is true for us. How do we know what things God wants us to put first and foremost in our lives? Let's put it a little differently. How can we come to understand the mission and assignments God's given us so that we can properly fulfill them? Well, how did Jesus do it? Just prior to beginning his ministry, in which he would preach the true gospel, he went off by himself and fasted. The purpose of a fast is to set aside physical needs to focus on things of the Spirit. Fasting is a way that each of us can receive greater understanding of God's purpose and receive answers to our prayers. Luke 4, 1 through 2 explains that Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. And while there, he fasted for 40 days and was tempted of the devil. Now what's really interesting about this is that Moses did the same thing. Prior to bringing the Ten Commandments and the Law of Moses to the children of Israel, 
he went up into Mount Sinai and fasted there for 40 days. You can find this in Deuteronomy 9.9 and Exodus 24.15-18. What's the pattern here? Both the prophet Moses and the Savior went out into nature to spend over a month fasting and communing with God, undistracted by others or worldly cares, prior to bringing the gospel law to their people. During that time, I get the impression that Moses was learning the workings of the law he was receiving. As for Jesus, the King James Version of Luke 4 makes it sound like the devil was tempting him for 40 days. But the Joseph Smith translation clarifies that after the 40 days ended, he was then tempted by the devil. That, to me, sounds more like the pattern we saw with Moses. In Matthew chapter 4, verses 2-3, through 3, we see Jesus fasting for 40 days and nights, and then it says he was afterward hungry, and then it mentions the devil coming to tempt him. So between Joseph Smith and Matthew, I think Jesus communed with God during those 40 days just like Moses did, and the devil came along afterward to tempt him. I did something kind of like this in December 2018 and January 2019. I didn't fast from food and water, but I did spend that time in a wilderness, so to speak. I quit working on all my other projects, and I quit checking social media so I could focus my time on studying the scriptures and preparing for these videos. I was surprised at how much I was able to accomplish. I'd been concerned about how I would balance my writing projects with these videos on top of everything else I have to do. Through this experience, the Lord helped me understand which projects I could set aside and which ones I needed to keep working on, and He's also shown me how to balance my time so that I can accomplish everything I need to do right now. I want to challenge you to spend 40 days in your personal wilderness to help you prioritize your time and energy. I'm not talking about a fast from food and water. Look at your life and find one thing that keeps you distracted from the things of God. It could be social media, games on your phone, a TV show, something on the internet, whatever it is that keeps you busy with less important things. Then for 40 days, give up that source of distraction. If you're not sure where to start, Elder Oaks's talk can give you some ideas. I've also linked President Nelson's talk when he challenged the women of the church to fast from social media for another idea. In place of the thing you cut out of your life, figure out what better or best things you can do with that time. I would suggest finding a way to focus on the things of God during the time that activity would normally take up. For example, if you're giving up playing games on your phone, you can instead read a couple of verses in your digital scriptures on your lunch break. Whatever you decide your priorities need to be, or whatever other answers you receive, write down your experiences during this time. You'll be surprised at how much you can accomplish as you align your time and priorities with God's priorities for you. Next week, we'll dive into St. John chapters 2-4. through four. Enjoy your feast upon the words of Christ, and remember, we're all brothers and sisters in God's family. We're in this together.